Hello guys and welcome to the fifth part of the texturing in Blender 2.8 video tutorial. I am the creator of the game called Snappy Mouse Run and in the previous video we covered the more advanced texture paint features like paint curves and brush textures and in this video we will round up texturing by looking at a technique called projection painting. Projection painting gives on an easy way to extract object texture from an image and apply that texture to a 3D object. In our case the 3D object is the teapot and we will extract the texture from the background images that we use to model the object. The images are hidden right now, change the display mode in the outliner to view layer, enable the reference collection, here they are, the front, side and top. To see them better in the viewport, hide the collection with the teapot object and press 1 on your numpad to see the front, 3 for the side or 7 for the top image. Let's start with the side view. The idea is simple, project what you see on the image, for instance on this side view image, to the actual object viewed from the same angle. So if I turn the 3D teapot object back on, the background image will be projected to this side of the object. That's the idea, so let's start. First we need to project the object UVs to match the side view. Prepare the workspace, turn off the reference images in the outliner, we don't need them in the viewport. Also turn off paint mask and switch to UV editing workspace. Ok, let's look at the object UVs. With the object selected and in edit mode we can see that the object already has a UV map. This UV map is also visible under properties object data. If you want to know more about UV layouts and how we created this UV map, then you can check out my previous video on this topic. The existing UV map will be the main layout. We will create another one and call it UV project and this one will be used only for the projection. You can delete it afterwards. Now let's unwrap the UVs to match the side view. Make sure the active UV map is the new UV project map. In the 3D viewport make sure that the object is selected and in edit mode. Now since the object is symmetrical on the X axis we can assume that the object will be painted symmetrical on both sides. So this side of the teapot will be painted the same as the other side. And Therefore we will select all vertices by pressing A. Otherwise we would need to select only the vertices facing the right side of the object, complete the projection process for that side and then do another projection and repeat the process for the other side. But to keep it simple we will assume the teapot is painted symmetrical and just select all vertices. Make sure you are in the side view so while in the viewport press 3 on your numpad. Go to UV, project from view, done. This is the UV projection and this is the main UV map. You can switch between them in the UV editor or under properties. Ok, set UV project as active and in the UV editor change the background image to the side view picture. Zoom out a bit, turn off stretching in the numbers panel and scale the whole layout so it matches the object in the background. That's it for the UV part. We can now take a look how this UV layout looks like. Under properties object data mark the UV project to be rendered and under material tab change the base color to the side image, switch the viewport to object mode and change shading to material. And there it is. Now someone would think wow that's amazing let's just use this UV layout instead of the original one. If it satisfies your project needs then you can do that. Maybe this will be just an object in the background of your scene or maybe it will be visible only for a short period in your scene then go for it. If we take a closer look then we will definitely see the imperfections. As such it is not the best example for a close up render. But if you say it's already good enough, just quick fix the obvious mistakes, then this side image will become the object's texture and we will fix the mistakes directly on it. Let's demonstrate that. Change the workspace to texture paint, create a copy of the image, go to image, save a copy. I'll call it simple texture. Now open the simple texture in the image editor and also on the properties material tab change the object base color to the new simple texture image. Ok the texture is ready for editing and now we will try to quick fix the obvious mistakes here on the upper part. Make sure no texture masks are set and we just want the default brush with a soft fall off. We will use the clone tool. It works like a clone tool that you can find in any photo editing software. You take a part of the image and clone it over some other part. And in Blender instead of working with the flat image you can clone directly onto the object surface. Here is how it works. With the clone tool active first select the source part by holding control and then left click on the surface to mark the source. Release the control key and with the left click just clone it wherever you want. I'm just tapping with the left mouse button and copying the source part, covering the mistakes.
maybe blur some parts out with the blur tool. As you can see, we can very quickly fix obvious mistakes if we decide that a quick fix is all we need. In that case, we are done. Now I will give you a few reasons why you might want to go a step further and reconsider using this only as a temporary layout. What we cannot fix so easily is the texture stretching on the top cover. The whole cover is stretched and blurry in relation to the side parts. If we switch back to UV editing workspace and select only the top cover by selecting one vertex and all connected by pressing Ctrl L, we can see that the top cover gets little space to be drawn on in comparison to the sides. Not to mention that a lot of image space is wasted because the UVs cover only this small part of the image. When we select all by pressing A in the viewport, we see that all this space around the UV island is wasted space and this costs memory and performance, especially if the object is intended to be a part of a bigger scene in a mobile game for instance. You always want that the UVs cover as much of the image as possible. As said, if you want to know more about UV layouts, you can check out my previous videos on this topic. In the previous videos we've already created a more efficient UV layout called UV Base, seen under Properties Object Data UV Maps, so we want to use this one instead and fill it with the content from the temporary UV layout. Or better to say, clone everything you see using the temporary layout to the original UV base layout. You guessed it, we will use the clone tool again. Switch to texture paint workspace and let's create a new image. This will be our final texture image used with the UV base layout. So I will call it texture base. I will change the color to white since the teapot is mostly white. Dimensions are ok, blank is ok, create. Now select the clone tool and go to texture slots in the numbers panel. If you don't see the numbers panel you can toggle it by pressing N or you can find texture slots under properties in the active tool tab. In texture slots you define the target texture you are currently painting on. Mode is set to material so the target texture is the one set in the material which is currently our side image called simple texture. We want to paint on the newly created texture base image so change the mode to single image and find texture base. Now the preview changes to the new texture. Also we don't want to use the temporary UV project layout as a target but instead the UV base. If you want to know more about texture slots you can check out my previous texture painting basics video. Ok, here we gonna clone on to. Now we need to specify the cloning source. With the clone tool still selected, go to brush settings and check clone from paint slot. Here we specify the source. The source is our temporary UV project layout with the temporary simple texture image. Now press F, make the brush a bit bigger, press Shift F, max out the strength and start cloning by painting onto the surface. As you clone the image reappears, you can also see in the image editor how the UV base layout gets filled with the content from the temporary UV project layout. Now since the whole teapot is white, I will clone only the parts with the most detail. We have details on the sides and on the top. Turn on X symmetry so it automatically clones both left and right sides of the object. Ok, great, we have projected the texture from one less efficient layout to another more efficient one. Turn off X symmetry for now. The top is still blurry and stretched though. Thankfully we also got a nice top view image of the teapot and now we also know how to project this top view image onto the object the same way as we've done with the side image. Let's repeat the process for the top view. First go to the UV editing workspace and project the UVs from the top view. We will reuse the UV project layout so make sure this one is selected under properties object data. Press 7 on your numpad to align the view, select all by pressing A and go to UV project from view. In the UV editor change the image to top and also under properties change the object's material base color to the top image. So we see what we are working with. Scale and align the UVs so the top cover UVs are matching with the cover on the image. We will focus only on the top cover and ignore the rest. Check also in the viewport that the cover is properly aligned. Ok, temporary UV layout is ready. Now go to texture painting workspace. The same procedure, select the clone tool. Under texture slots make sure we are painting onto the texture base using the UV base layout. And the clone source is our top image using the UV project layout. Adjust the brush size and strength and since we will clone only onto the top, enable the paint mask, tap into edit mode and select only the top cover by selecting one of its vertices and pressing Ctrl L to select all connected, tap back into texture paint and this way we constrain painting only to the top cover. Go to the top view, press 7 on the numpad and start cloning. 
The cloning wasn't perfect, so let's just quickly fix the mistakes as we did before. Disable clone from paint slot, we will clone from the surface directly. So control left click the surface to set the source part, release control key and clone the source part over the mistakes. Maybe blur out a bit. Done. Disable paint mask, zoom out. The top is not stretched anymore and it matches the actual reference object on the images. The texture is still not perfect, looks somehow dirty in comparison to those clean white areas, but at least we now have a properly mapped base texture image. Save the texture, go to image, save as, save. Under properties object data we can delete the temporary UV project map, we don't need it anymore. Under material set the base color to texture base image. That's it for this video, we've covered how to extract the texture from the background images and now our our teapot has a real texture. If you haven't already make sure to check out my previous texture painting videos where I covered the basic and advanced texture paint settings. In the next video we will clean up the texture before we dive into another big topic called 3D animation. So stay tuned. As always thank you very much for watching, give a like and subscribe if you found this video useful and want to see more content like this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.